pray uh, just for the, the minds of God's people. Uh, we are in a time that if you are not careful, uh, yes, if you're not careful, uh, the enemy will grab your mind. And so I want you to take a moment and, and let's just brace ourselves. Let's just, let's just be right there and take a moment in, in this stillness. Let's be strengthened through the power of prayer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. So Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your power. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. We just, we just love you right now. Come on, take, take a few moments just to give him praise, just to bless him. Come on, give him, give him a few words of adoration. We lift you today. We bless you today. We honor you today. You are so good. Hallelujah. And so deserving of praise. You're deserving of all glory. You're deserving of the honor. And we bless you today. Come on, take a few more seconds. Come on, if, if, if God has been good to you, I want you to just go ahead and give him some glory. Come on, I want you to give him some glory. I want you to give him some glory. Come on, just glorify him. Just glorify him, just for a moment. We glorify you. Yes, Lord, we thank you today. We thank you today. We bless you today. For you are good. Huh. You are good. In the midst of all that we are facing, you are good. In the midst of all that we have seen, you are still good. And Father, today, we lift you up. We know that your word says, if you be lifted, you'll draw all men unto us. So today, Lord, we bless you. We bless you, we praise you. We honor you, we lift you. We glorify you, hallelujah. We glorify you. I pray right now for every person. I pray that they be strengthened. I pray that their heart won't fail. In the name of Jesus, I pray that our hope and our trust is in you. That we don't look at what we see, but we listen to what we hear. I thank you that our ears and our hearts are sensitive. We are postured and turned towards you. Your word says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven and I'll heal their land. I thank you. Hallelujah. I thank you that the healing shall come to this land. I thank you that you are covering your people. In the name of Jesus, I thank you that you're covering your people right now. I thank you that you're being glorified, that even in this, you shall get the glory. I speak over my brothers and my sisters. I, sp I speak over sons and daughters. I speak over ministry gifts. I speak over uh, those that are, that are afraid. I speak and declare that the love of God is shed abroad in your heart. And the love of God begins to embrace you and su surround you and, and, and cover you and, and cloak you. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord says that the Lord will bless the righteous and he will cloak us with favor. I thank you that you cloak us with favor today in the name of Jesus. I thank you that your glory is being seen. I thank you that your glory is being revealed in the lives of every believer. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the joy of the Lord is our strength. In the name of Jesus, and I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you glory. Hallelujah. I give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you right now that your presence fills every home. Thank you right now that your presence fills every room. In the name of Jesus. And the, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. And I decree and declare by faith, it is so. 
in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you. Glory to God. We thank you even now. We thank you even now for what we shall see. We thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I thank you for covering us. I thank you for covering us. For covering us. Co hallelujah. Covering our minds. Covering our bodies. Hallelujah. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I thank you that we are in the secret place. I thank you that we are in the secret place, that we are under your shadow, that we are covered. Hallelujah. That no sickness will come nigh our dwelling in the name of Jesus. I pray for those whose, whose uh, minds have been in turmoil. I pray for those who have had trouble in their minds. The peace of God be yours now in the name of Jesus. I pray for those who have had family members that have been affected by COVID-19. I pray God, those that are dealing with it, that you give them miracles now. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that you give miracle signs and wonders. Cause them to happen. Go in every hospital and heal right now. We curse COVID-19. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that you do not have victory over the saints of God. In the name of Jesus, and I thank you for those. I thank you for those who have, have, who have lost loved ones to this, this disease, to this, this virus. I pray, God, for your, your strength. I pray now that the Holy Spirit would comfort each heart that is dealing with the loss of a loved one. I pray for ministries who have lost pastors and leaders. I pray, God, that you would strengthen their hearts in the name of Jesus. And Father, we know that you have all power in your hands. We know, God, that you are still in control. And so, Father, we say yes to your will. Yes to your way. Be glorified in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, take a moment to just worship the Lord and give him some praise right there. Glory to God. Just give him some praise right there. Give him some praise. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. It is so and it cannot be reversed. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. You can just let that play for a moment. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. I pray uh, that you all are ready for the word of God. Uh, we are going to go into the word. And um, today I just, I feel led to just kind of uh, take us through um, where we've been and there's some there's some other things that I want to share with you too um, under the leading of the Holy Spirit and I believe that he will give us uh, the grace to do it to walk it through um, I want to as we are preparing to go into the Word of God I want you to um, join us on Wednesday nights Wednesday night at 7 p.m. we are right here uh, in the Word on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. We're right here for Bible study, our online Bible study, and I want you to uh, consider joining us, and I want you to share it with someone. Let someone know that we are learning the Word of God. We are studying the Word of God. Uh, we are being changed and empowered by God's Holy Word. Amen. So I want you to join us on Wednesday nights. All right? Um, also, I want you to uh, look out. God is expanding us. God is expanding us and we are growing and we are going to multiple platforms. And so we're excited about that. Uh, I'm excited to announce that we are now going to be streaming live, not only on Facebook, but we'll be streaming on YouTube. Uh, we'll be streaming on Twitch TV. And we'll also be streaming on Periscope, all right? And so uh, I want you to tell somebody 
uh, tell somebody about it, and we're excited about it, what God is getting ready to do. So I want you to go ahead, uh, after this broadcast, I want you to go ahead and follow us. Uh, if you're not following us at uh, Facebook, you can follow us at Edgefield Fayetteville. You can also follow us on YouTube at Edgefield Church, all right? Edgefield Church. You can follow us on YouTube at Edgefield Church. And on Twitch TV, uh, that's a newer one. So you can follow us on Twitch TV at Edgefield Fayetteville, all right? Uh, on Periscope, you can follow us at Edgefield Fayetteville, okay? And I'm so excited about it. And uh, we, we're glad that God is expanding us and giving us uh, the ability to do so. We have also have some other exciting things that are coming that are in the works. I am so excited for what God is doing here at Edgefield. We may not be in the building, but we are still alive and well. All right. God is praised. Glory to God. All right. Let's get ready to go into the word of God. Uh, if you have not shared this, go ahead and share it. Uh, if you have not started a watch party, feel free to do that now. Uh, and we are going to bring in, uh, in a few moments, we're going to bring in uh, Black Women Empowered today. All right? And we're excited to have everyone on as, <clears throat> excuse me, as we are preparing to uh, go into the Word of God, I want you to to, we're going to read our uh, foundational scripture, uh, the place that we have been studying. And uh, we're going to, I believe God's going to speak to our heart today. I really do. I'm excited about it. Um, so let's get ready. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and get your Bibles. And we're going to go to Acts chapter 2. And we're going to probably go uh, to a few other places in the scriptures today um, as the Lord leads us. All right. Uh, but as you all are getting your, your scriptures, I'm going to, uh, we're going to go ahead and go live on Black Women Empowered, all right? <clears throat> and we're going to welcome our Black Women Empowered audience, and they are preparing to come in right now. Now I want everybody to welcome Black Women Empowered, okay? Black Women Empowered, we are glad to have you on which is another network God has expanded us, <clears throat> excuse me, God has expanded us and caused us to uh, grow and he's expanding our reach and I am definitely excited about it. So God bless all of those that are coming in now. They are coming in from all over the world on Black Women in Power. We say God bless you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Join us and let's worship the Lord together. We're ready to get into the word of God. All right, we're going to Acts chapter 2. We're going to start in Acts chapter 2. All right, Acts chapter 2. And a good morning to all of you. And let's, um, all of those that are viewing on our Facebook Live, let's welcome our Black Women Empowered audience. Let's welcome them. Let's give them a good morning. They're coming in from uh, Southern California, Asheville, North Carolina, Fort Worth, Texas. They're viewing from all over the country, all over the world, and we are glad to have them. And we also want to give a good shout out to Dr. Jacqueline King, who is the president and CEO of Black Women and Black Men Empowered. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to share with you. I also want to take a moment to thank all of you uh, who have supported, uh, you supported this week of uh, panel discussions we had at the Red Tape Roundtable for Black Men Empowered. So I want to say thank you so much. We were able to cover some, some amazing uh, topics and that is an ongoing conversation that we're going to continue to have uh, once a week on Black Men Empowered, all right? And so we say thank you uh, for your support. Also, <laughs> there's been a lot of things going on this, uh, this week uh, and this month. Uh, on Friday, July 24th, um, my brother, Minister Jonathan Watts and company released a single, a tribute to the late uh, Pastor Timothy Wright. And the name of the song is Come Thou Almighty King. And yours truly is featured on that single. So. Uh, if you haven't gotten it, I want to just tell you, go ahead and pick that up 
because it might bless your soul. It's a nice, feel-good, churchy choir song. And we had a we had a good time singing that song. So uh, go ahead and, and download that a little bit later on. All right, we ready to get in the word. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right, we're in Acts chapter 2. Glory to God. Acts chapter 2. And I'm going to read through this and then we're going to uh, have some dialogue about it. You ready? Acts chapter 2. And we'll start at verse 1. <clears throat> and this is the New International Version. It says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of the violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire and separated and came, uh, that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. All right. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't these all who were speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts uh, of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Jude uh, Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? All right, verse uh, 13. Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken, hallelujah, by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons, listen to the word, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hallelujah. What a mighty, 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 mighty passage of scripture. I love this. I love this verse. I love this, this text rather. Uh, and I, I want to take a moment. I know we pray, but I just believe in prayer. So we're going to pray right on in again. Father, we thank you for this time in your word. We ask that you would be with us, speak to our hearts, give us what you want us to know. Spirit of grace, spirit of truth be released in this room to speak to your people in the name of Jesus, may the gospel be preached all over the world. In Jesus' name we pray. I pray now that you use me uh, as a tool of righteousness to bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for sharing. Those that are sharing uh, now, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Keep sharing. You want to start your watch parties? Go ahead. Start your watch parties. All right. Let's get into it. So we have been talking about how prophetic uh, Pentecost is. Uh, we have learned over uh, the course of uh, a month, maybe a month and a half, we have been talking about Pentecost and the power of Pentecost and knowing uh, uh, the importance 
of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I wonder if there's anybody else beside me that knows you need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives, okay? And uh, so when we look at uh, Acts chapter 2, what we've read, I read the entirety, the, the, all of those verses, not really the entirety of the text, but um, I read a lot of those verses because they give us good context to understand Pentecost and understand why uh, Pentecost is prophetic in nature. Um, when you talk about a prophetic nature, when you talk about a prophetic nature, uh, what that really means, if it is prophetic in nature, it is uh, predictive in nature or uh, ominous. Uh, it has prophetic signs. It has the, the, the powers of a prophet, if you will, <laughs> uh, the functions of a prophet. OK. And so so. Uh, when you talk about something having a prophetic nature, um, you, you're seeing a lot of the predictive things. Amen. God bless you in Turks and Caicos. Thank you for joining us all the way in Turks and Caicos. So um, so so this this Pentecost is prophetic on so many levels. Now, when we learn about Pentecost, we learn uh, that Pentecost, of course, that, that word Pentecost means 50th, and it's 50 days after uh, Easter. And I'm kind of running through that really quick because I want to get into some information that I think will be useful uh, for you. Uh, so it's 50 days after Easter, uh, and it is the start of the season of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost is the start of the season of Pentecost, all right? So again, Pentecost is not just a day. It is a season. Please don't forget that. Pentecost is not just a day. It is a season. Please, please, please don't forget that. Pentecost is not just a day. It is a season. Now, in Acts chapter 2, this is a specific uh, Pentecost, and this one stands out from the rest because something supernatural happened at this Pentecost, all right? Now, this Pentecost happens um, immediately after the resurrect, the, the, the uh, ascension uh, of Jesus. He is resurrected and he ascends back unto the Father, right? And uh, on, before he leaves, in Acts chapter 1, he tells them, go to Jerusalem and, and wait for the promise, right? And so they are there, and they go, and they are obedient, and they are filled, as the Bible says, with the Holy Spirit. So this one is significant because the promise of the Holy Spirit is released, all right? And as the promise of the Holy Spirit is released, they are now empowered. And this is what we have taken time to really investigate how when the Holy Spirit comes into their lives, how they are empowered to do something um, that is outside of their normal abilities. And this is what I want to tell you today, that if you are going to accomplish anything, uh, anything that is significant or any kind of significant or major impact or anything that is bigger than you is going to have to be powered by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came, hallelujah, so that you can do great things. Jesus speaks to the disciples and says to them, um, greater works shall you do in my name, right? So here's the question. How does the greater works happen? How would I be able to do greater works uh, in his name? I'm going to do it in his name, but I'm also going to do it by his power. All right. So if I'm going to do greater works, it's going to be powered by the Holy Spirit. And so we see this happening uh, in Acts chapter two. Ready? We see this happening in Acts chapter 2 uh, where they are filled and they begin to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance or as the Spirit enabled them. So they begin to speak in language 
languages that they had not learned, but they were able to speak in these languages, apparently fluently, through the power of the Spirit, all right? Through the power of the Spirit. Now, I, I, I'm not going to get into all of the things that happened there, uh, all, of, all of the things that happened, uh, uh, but we do know that we were reunited, all right? We were reunited, we were reconciled, and all of these things happened uh, during this time, right? So, but what I want to place emphasis on is how they are enabled, they are, they, they are powered to do something um, supernatural. And this is what I want to tell you, that when you learn how to obey God, uh, it releases the supernatural to happen in your life. If you learn how to be submitted to the Holy Spirit, there is no, there is no limit to what you can do. If you learn how to be obedient and yield to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Please hear me. If you submit your life, if you submit your life to the Holy Spirit, you will begin to see the supernatural released in your life. Now, I want to I want to ask a question. Is there anybody that's watching today that needs to see something supernatural happen in your life. If you need to see something supernatural happen in your life, I want to challenge you to yield to the Holy Spirit. I want to challenge you <laughs> to recommit to a life of obedience to God. Because as you recommit to, the, to a life of obedience to God, the, the, the obedience releases the supernatural to occur in your life. Just ask Peter about it. Ask Peter. Uh, Peter uh, um, is on a boat with his brothers, uh, his, his fellow disciples, and Jesus comes walking on the water. Jesus comes walking on the water to them in the middle of a storm and they're afraid. The Bible says that when Jesus speaks to them, he says, be of good cheer. It's me. Don't be afraid. All right. It's me. And Peter says, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come. Here is where we see the supernatural being released uh, as Peter is obedient. Jesus gives the command and says, come on. It's up to Peter to obey what Jesus said. As he obeys what Jesus says, the Bible said that Peter began to walk on water. So as he obeyed, his obedience released the supernatural that caused him to be able to do something that was literally impossible. Oh, my God. I need y'all to understand that if you can, if you can submit yourself in a way that you are not, hallelujah, you are not led by your flesh, that you are not led by what you want to do, come on, come on, that, that you, are, you are not following your own agenda, but you are willing to obey God in a way, uh-oh, that makes you uncomfortable. When you're willing to obey God, even in a way that makes you uncomfortable, you will release the supernatural in your life. You will see the impossible happen. My God, my God. I want y'all to put this on the screen real quick. I kind of feel like having church. I want y'all to put this on the screen really quick and say, all things are possible. Come on, put it on the screen. All things are possible. I need y'all to say that with me. All things are possible. I'll say it again. All things are possible. Jesus says, uh, he says to them, uh, even in, uh, I believe it's Matthew 21, I want to say, he said to them, with man things are impossible, but with God, all things 
are possible. I see you. Put it on the screen. Yeah, all things are possible. And I need you to declare this. I need you to declare this in faith. I know it looks impossible. Listen to me. Look at me. I know it seems impossible. But believe me, all things, glory to God, are possible. All things are possible. And I'm taking a moment to release this into the atmosphere because faith comes by hearing. All right. And so I want to release this in your atmosphere, in that place where you you are afraid. You don't you don't have everything you need. You don't have everything you think you need. You don't have everything and, and things are out of place. I want to tell you all things are possible. Now, how do I know all things are possible? Because once, watch this, once I submit myself, once I give it to God, my aunt, my, my grandmother's sister, she used to sing a song uh, in, in what they call the number one choir. Y'all don't, don't know about that. The number one choir used to sing and they had these they had these robes, these green and white robes with the big bell sleeves. And you know, you do like that. <laughs> and, and, and they would sing uh, uh, with, th with these green and white robes on. And my aunt, she would sing a song, um, uh, turn it over to Jesus, right? Turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over to Jesus. He'll make everything all right. <laughs> and, and, and she said, uh, um, uh, He'll make a way for you, right? She said, but you got to give it over to him, right? You got to give it over to him. Turn it over to Jesus. So let me stop right here. On our, we're on our way somewhere. We're going to go deeper in a minute. But, but I want to I stop right here and tell you, you got to turn it over. You got you to turn it over to Jesus. You got to turn it over. You got to yield. You got to yield to the Holy Spirit, all right? Some of y'all are Peter. Some of y'all are Peter. Y'all on the boat. You got the word, but you're scared to step out. And so what you got to do, you got to trust that if you obey what he says, you're going to see the impossible. <laughs> Glory to God. All things are possible. All right. So, so now what we're looking at in Acts chapter 2, what we're looking at is a supernatural phenomenon because these people are yielding in a way that the Holy Spirit can uh, empower them and enable them to speak languages that they've never learned. And there are people that are around that are listening to them and they begin to hear them in their own language. They begin to hear them in their own language. And so, so what we're looking at, what we're seeing in Acts chapter 2 is uh, uh, you're seeing a powerful, uh, a powerful display here. You see something really, really powerful um, to know that if I yield, if I yield to the voice of the Holy Spirit, that he will enable me to do, uh, 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 he, he will enable me to, to walk, to flow, to live in the supernatural. Okay, ready? Now, what we see there, we see there the power of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2, and we're talking about how prophetic uh, this Pentecost is, right? So now, th this, this, this particular Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 is prophetic uh, uh, even now because the things that we see in Acts chapter 2 are things that are happening right now. They were in the middle of a whole bunch of things going on, right? It's, there's, there's a whole, there's a, there's a plethora of things that are happening all around them, and the Holy Spirit comes in the middle of all of this and gives them power, right? And then the church starts, but the people are looking, watch this, the people are looking, and some of them are saying, well, they must be drunk, right? Peter stands up and says, Listen, these people are not drunk as you suppose. But this is what was prophesied by the prophet Joel. 
that in the last days I would pour out my spirit on all flesh. Right? He said, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. Now watch this. The spirit comes and people don't recognize that this is the spirit. Right? Holy Spirit comes and people have no clue who he is. So he's bringing, he's introducing the world to power. And he uses the 120 to introduce the world to power. All right. Man, I could preach that right there by itself, but I'm, I got somewhere to go. I'm not going to do it. Now, what, what, what I want you to see, we, see, we look at this, this prophetic Pentecost, right? And it's, it's prophetic on so many levels. It's predictive in nature. It's predictive. What we see in Pentecost, we see the spirit being poured out. Then we see uh, the power being released. We see the gifts in operation. All right? So now the gifts are in operation. But here's something that I need you to understand. The gifts are in operation, but the Holy Spirit didn't come just for gifts. Uh-oh. So what we see then is the gifts are working. This is one of the gifts that's in 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, this is the, the gift of tongues, right? They're speaking in tongues. They're speaking in languages, right? But also, there, there are many other gifts, and we're going to get to the one that we've been focusing on in a moment. But i got to stop right here and, and talk to you about the gifts and the fruit, all right? There are gifts and the fruit. So when the Holy Spirit came into the earth, there were gifts released, and there are fruit that are developed in you. So when the Holy Spirit comes, when you receive him into your life, according to Galatians 5, right? You, go, you got to go there and check it out. Galatians 5 will begin to teach you about the fruit of the Spirit. I wonder if we got time to go there. Y'all got time to go with me? Come on, let's go. Galatians 5. I got my granny's, my grandma's Bible here, so here we go. Ready? Galatians 5, 22. Watch this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Did y'all hear what I read? I'm going to try it again. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Now, these fruit, if you notice, all of these deal with character. They deal with character. Now, the Holy Spirit has come into your life to develop your character. Y'all hear me? He has come to develop your character. You need the Holy Spirit because the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit are what will develop you. You want to know how to stop cussing your brothers and sisters out? Let the Holy Spirit develop you. Let him develop fruit in you. My God. Let him develop fruit in you. Because as he begins to develop that fruit in you, what, what happens is the fruit begin to conform you into the image of Christ Jesus. All right? Now, as we're looking at the fruit, oh, I wish I had time to open this up. <laughs> as we look at the fruit, the Bible says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, 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 love. Why did I say love so many times? 
Because everything else is rooted in love. All of these fruit are rooted in love. And it's designed to bring you to a place. Come on. Come on. To bring you to a place of, of right standing and right and circumspect character. Upstanding character. All right? So, if the Holy Spirit is living in you, I don't want to bull y'all, but if the Holy Spirit is living in you, then you are learning how to love. You are learning how to have joy. You are learning peace. Oh my God. You are learning long suffering. See, see what, what, I, what I want you to understand is if you are going to live in the earth, you need a teacher. And the Bible says in John 16 that the Holy Spirit, he's the spirit of truth and he will teach you. Hallelujah. Am I too excited about this? He will, he will teach you and he will lead you into all truth. You need a teacher. Watch this. Because you don't know how to love. Oh. You, you don't know. You don't know how to love until you have experienced real love. Not flawed love. But the love of Jesus. Come on here. So when the Holy Spirit comes, he begins to teach you about this love. Glory to God. He begins to teach you about this and you begin, he begins to, to develop in you these fruit. Now watch this. He's the spirit of truth, right? Y'all give me time to, y'all give me time. I've, I'm, I'm, I don't want to feel rushed. Y'all give me time. All right. He, he, he will, he will, he will, watch this. He uses the fruit, right? He's the spirit of truth and he begins to develop in you. Now, how does he do this? Romans uh, 8 and 26 and 27 says, um, the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered, right? And it's translated, cannot be uttered of men. And then the next verse says, he that searches the heart knows what is the mind of the spirit. He knows what is the mind of the spirit, okay? And he prays according to the will of God. He knows what is the mind of the spirit and he has the blueprint. All right. He has the blueprint. So what he does is he prays according to this blueprint that he has. All right. And so he's praying for you because you don't know what to pray for. He's praying for you because you are praying. Uh oh, uh oh, wait a minute. Uh oh. You, you're praying, you're praying for Johnny to be your husband. Okay. See, I knew y'all was going to tense up on me right there. But he's praying for the will of God. And some of the things, some of the things, you, you really got to thank God for the Holy Ghost. Because some of the things that you prayed, had you got them? <laughs> Had you, had you got the money when you wanted the money, you would have destroyed yourself and everybody around you. Had you got the relationship that you were praying for, that wasn't in the will of God, you would have been miserable for the rest of your life. Y'all don't want to praise him like that, huh? Go ahead and praise him. You ought to thank God for the Holy Ghost, right? Watch this. So he, he prays according to the blueprint, but that's not what I'm after. What I'm after now is... Not only does he pray according to, to the blueprint, he begins to teach you according to the blueprint. He's the spirit of truth. He's the spirit of truth. All right? So his, watch this, his objective is to make sure that the will of God for your life in the earth is executed. And he uses truth. He reveals truth. Watch this, about where you are, hallelujah, about where you are, 
relative to where you're going. So he begins to teach you about your present moment. This is why you need the Holy Ghost, because when the enemy begins to set up conflict around you, when he starts to stir up stuff, the Holy Ghost will teach you the truth about the moment. Ah. Hallelujah. He'll begin to show you that what is, he'll show, let me say it like this. He'll show you what's real and what's fake. All right, let me go to my other gift. Let me go to my other gift. This is one that we've been talking about. All right, so when the Holy Spirit comes, am I enjoying this too much? Okay, all right. So the Holy, so the Holy Spirit comes, right? And when the Holy Spirit comes, another one of the gifts, according to 1 Corinthians 12, another one of the gifts is the gift of discerning of spirits. All right, the gift of discerning of spirits. And, and y'all know we've gone over this. Now, watch this. Gifts of discerning of spirit. The discerning of spirits to distinguish between what is right, what is wrong. So the Holy Spirit, he begins to teach you and give you the truth. Watch this. Show you how to determine what is right and what is wrong in the situation that is around you. So he tells you the truth about it. Oh. Can I tell you something? Some of y'all, the Holy Ghost has been talking to you the whole time. You've been looking for a voice. And he said, I don't have to give you a voice. What I do is I give you unctions. I give you red flags. I give you alarms. I give you alerts. Okay. All right. He, I, I wanna, he says, I'm going to use what you have. Come on, y'all. Come on. When you're yielded, he says, I can use your intuition. You'll begin to know something without the information. Can I teach today? You will begin, he will, he'll begin to give you access to information. My God. He'll give you access to information. He'll tell you before they tell you. He'll tell you before it's revealed. All right, so, 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 so the Holy Spirit, he comes and he gives you that gift and he shows you the truth. Watch this. He shows you the truth about where you are. But here it is. Here it is. Here it is. The reason why some of us still seem like we're in the dark about stuff, because we have not yielded. Because we have not yielded. Okay. What do you mean we haven't yielded? I pray all the time. It's, it's a wonderful thing to pray, but you have to have the right posture in prayer. If you are going to pray, oh God, Whew, I feel the Holy Ghost pushing me too. If you're going to pray, you got to have the right posture. See, you can't, you can't enter into his presence praying and, oh boy. You can't enter in there praying and you, you, you got all, you're, you're allowing your frustrations to cause you to ignore the presence of God, the holiness, the reverence of his presence. You get what I'm saying? Your, your posture is not right. You got to humble yourself when you come in prayer. I, I know you're frustrated. Now, I get it. I get it. Trust me. I get it. I know you're frustrated. You get angry, but your posture has to be right in prayer. All right. If you're going to come to God, he that cometh to God must believe that he is. You got to come with a humble spirit. Well, how do you be frustrated and humble? You can be frustrated and humble. You got to recognize who he is. and Realize that he's God. And watch this. Your frustration, your situation has not changed his position. He's still God, even though you might have stuff going on. It hadn't changed who he is. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It has not changed who he is, right? Now, 
So when you come to that place, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta humble yourself. You gotta humble yourself. And so, so a lot of us, we're frustrated and we're not seeing and we, we, we seem to be clueless because we have not submitted. We, ex, we, we accept things without agreeing. So sometimes we'll accept the situation itself, but we're not in agreement with God's allowance or God's will for a thing happening. Trust me. I know what I'm talking about. I know, I know what I'm talking about. Acceptance is not always agreement. All right? And so sometimes what we've got to do is cause ourselves to be realigned so that we are not uh, postured the wrong way. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Ready? Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. All right. So the Holy Spirit comes and he teaches us and he, he gives us discernment. So what, what happens? I start to mature in my discernment the more I yield to God. And I, let me tell you something that's important about this. I don't think I'm going to get to my notes today. Let me tell you what's, what's important about this. What's important about yielding to God is, is being reminded of the fact that somebody else is dependent upon your yielding. I'm going to try it another way. Somebody is depending on your yes. You holding somebody up. When you, okay, when you don't want to walk in obedience, you're holding somebody else up. What do you mean? There are people that are connected to you. There are people who have breakthroughs, who have deliverances, who have liberties and freedoms connected to your yes. And so when you learn how to say yes to God, man, I feel like I'm preaching today. When you, when you say yes to God, what you do, <laughs> you open up the opportunity for all of those that are connected to you, come on, to walk out their place of deliverance. I, I want you to stop right here. I want you to stop right here and put this on the screen. Yes, Lord. Whoop! Come on, put it on the screen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Put it on the screen. Yes, Lord. I see you. Somebody say, I say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, come on, tell him yes. That's the old church. Come on, lift up your hand and tell him yes, Lord. Huh? My soul says yes. Come on, let your soul say yes. Let your emotions, your will, your choices, let them say yes. Because if you can submit them, glory to God, there'll be a release of power. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's go. Let's go. I told y'all we were going to be jumping today. Let's go. All right. Yes, Lord. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost on this. Yes, Lord. All right. Y'all go with me. Come on. Let's go to Luke 4. Let's go to Luke 4. Now, let's go to uh, Matthew 4. Let's look at that account today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Matthew 4. Let's go. Y'all ready? Y'all stay with me. Stay with me now. Chisholm, I need you to holler for me. <laughs> you ready? Watch this. Matthew 4. I'm going to start at verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. I'm going to read it again. Then was, hey, Mother Bo. I'm sorry, y'all. She's from my, my home church. I love you so much. <laughs> Listen to this. Um, then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted 
of the devil. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Can I ask you something? What if Jesus decided to disobey? Okay, all right. Hold on, let's, let's go on up a little bit. Uh, jump, jump, jump over, jump. now let's jump to Luke 4. That's, the, that's Matthew's account. Let's, let's go to Luke's account. You ready? Luke 4. I hope y'all getting something out of this. All right, Luke 4. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, after he hungered. Now, let's, let's skip. Let's skip. Let's skip. All right, ready? Come down to verse 14. Verse 14 says, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Wait a minute. Did y'all? Okay, I'm, I'm going to try it again. So let's read verse 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Go back to 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Jesus. You know why some people don't follow the leading of the Holy Spirit? Because you don't have confidence that you're going to return. If, what, what, if, what if Jesus, what if Jesus decided to disobey? If he had disobeyed, he would not have returned in the power of the Spirit. Okay. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody out. What I want to tell you, you got to obey. Because on the other end of this is some power that you need for what you've been called to do. Y'all won't let me preach today. I'm trying to preach. And y'all won't let me preach. I just, I just want to preach. Can I preach? Thank you. I'm going to try it again. And Jesus was led. Hallelujah. He was led. Full of the Holy Ghost. Led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He went through this, this wilderness. And in this wilderness... When, when it was time for him to leave, he left with something. I wish I could get some help around here. I'm going to try it again. He, he, he left with something. Can, can I encourage you today? Can I just encourage somebody in here who felt like you're in this thing by yourself? You feel like you're just hopeless. You don't have nothing to, to live for. Can I tell you something? It's not the end of it. Sometimes, I said this, uh, uh, I think, Friday on, on the, the, uh, the red talk, red table thing. Uh -huh, red tape, yeah, that. I said, uh, sometimes the rough path, path is the righteous path. Now, we don't like that. I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't like it. But sometimes the rough path is the righteous path. And if I can endure the rough path, when I come out of this, I'm not coming out empty handed. Whew. I wish somebody would put that on the screen. I'm not coming out empty handed. Come on, if I can be obedient, if I can follow his leading, I'm going to come out of this with power. I'm going to come out of this, oh my goodness, with the power, my goodness, I'm going to be able to preach the gospel in a way 
that when I open my mouth, watch this, the poor in spirit don't remain poor. Come on, y'all. That when I open my mouth, I'm going to be able to set people free out of hostage situations. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? If, 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 if I can endure this season right here, I'm not coming out of this empty handed. Oh God, Lord help me, help me hold myself. I'm not coming out of this empty handed. All right, okay, I gotta quit. I didn't even get to the stuff I wanted to get to. I didn't even get to it. I didn't even get to it. I gotta, I gotta cut this out. Um, uh, Odom said something that was so powerful, y'all. Odom said something, and, and BWE, I know y'all don't know who Odom is. She's an elder here at the Edgefield Church. Uh, elder Odom, she said something that was powerful in Bible study, and it blessed me. She said, she said, um, a prophetic word is an invitation to a conversation. That's good, ain't it? I wish I'd have said that. She said, a prophetic word is an invitation for a conversation. Why am I saying this right now? Because sometimes when God releases the word in your life, the word itself is prophetic in nature, that it is predictive, right? It is predictive. It is, it is giving you insight about your future. Watch this. So, and that's where, that's where the word and the Holy Spirit works in, in this as well. That's where the word of knowledge comes. The word of prophecy comes, right? The word of prophecy begins to come. The gift of prophecy and the prophetic word that comes. Listen to this. The prophetic word uh, it is an initiation. Again, I started with Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing. Faith is consummated. It is initiated by a word that I hear. So God releases the word. This is the importance of the prophetic word. God releases the word that initiates my hearing. My hearing is initiated and faith or trust is produced. As trust is produced, if I can gain your trust, then I can release information. I can communicate with you effectively because I have your trust. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Here's what's important. If I can get your trust, then I can communicate to you effectively and the message that I communicate to you, my God, you walk in faith believing what I said. So the Holy Spirit releases the word. The word produces faith. And faith, according to Hebrews 11, is what I need to please God. <sighs> Y'all, I'm trying to cut this out. I'm trying to cut this out. So the Holy Spirit releases that word. Right? He releases that word. He teaches you about that word. Gives you the truth about it. Releases that word. The word produces faith. Now, Hebrews 11 says, For without faith, it is impossible to please God. You hear me? So as he releases that word, watch this. As that revelation comes, it initiates faith in me. See, the whole idea was not to get you stuff. The whole idea is to get you in relationship. I want a conversation with you. He said, I want a conversation with you. That's, that's what he's saying. He said, I don't want to give you stuff. I don't want to give you things. I want to have communion. I want to have conversation. 
And if you talk about communion, communion itself, oh man, it is, it is the exchange of intimate thoughts and feelings between two people. That's what communion is, is dialogue, is conversation, and a prophetic word is an invitation for a conversation. Man, I wish I had time. I wish y'all wouldn't tire. Because I'll take y'all over to John 24, John 4, 24. But Jesus, Jesus resting on the well because he's tired, but he had a plan. And there's a woman that comes to the well and Jesus began to speak to her and says, give me the drink. He just wanted to have a conversation with her. He says, give me the drink. She said, we don't, y'all people don't have nothing to do with us. So for those who don't, who don't realize, there, there, were, uh, uh, there were race issues in the Bible. Okay, there, there were race issues in the Bible. In fact, Peter got rebuked by Paul because he didn't want to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. That's another story. Anyway, Jesus talks to this woman and she has a conversation with him. He says, give me the drink. She said, we don't have anything to do with your, our people. She's Samaritan. You're Jew. We don't have anything to do with each other. The Bible says, Jesus said, if you knew who was talking to you, if you knew who was talking to you right now, you, you, you would know that you would ask me for water and the water that I will give you, you'll never thirst again. Man, Jesus could talk that talk, I'm telling you. He could talk that talk. He said, he said if you knew who this was, you would, if you knew who was asking you for water, you would ask me. And the water I would give you is better than the stuff that I'm asking you for. So she's baited. She has that conversation. Now she says, well, give me some of this water. I want some of this water. Now he's got her. He says, all right, go get your husband. <laughs> she said, I don't have one. I'm paraphrasing. He says, <laughs> he says listen, you, you, you spoke right when you said that. Because you, 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 you've had five husbands. And the one you have now is not yours. So you spoke the truth. <laughs> and then she starts to get deep. Oh, sir, I perceive you are a prophet. She gets deep now because he's, he's stepping in a business. <laughs> and she starts to talk about, she starts to develop this conversation about worship. And Jesus says, listen, you don't even know about worship. Y'all don't even know what y'all worship. He says salvation is of the Jews. It comes from the Jews. Y'all don't know what, we worship, what you worship. We know because it comes of the Jews, right? But then he says, but don't even worry about that because the hour is coming and now is. Come on here. The hour has come where the true worshipers got to stand up. Right? He said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The Father seeketh such to worship him, and they that worship must worship in spirit and in truth. The whole point of this is that he wants to have conversation, and he wants to have conversation, glory to God, because he wants to bring communication that brings transformation. I'm going to try it again. The whole purpose of the conversation, he wants to have conversation so that com communication can bring transformation. He wants to say something to you that will literally change your life. Do y'all hear what I'm saying to you? He wants to teach you something that will literally cause you to shift your entire paradigm. Your entire model. I prophesy to you today that the things that you used to depend on, you won't be able to. I prophesy that you begin to depend on the power, the leading of the Holy Spirit in a way that it even scares you. <laughs> I got to quit this. I got to come out of this, y'all. I've been at this too long. I've got to stop. I've been, I've been at this too long. 
But I'm telling you, I'm telling y'all something. I'm telling y'all. Holy Ghost is on this thing. He's on this word. I need you, I need you to understand that. He's on this word. I got to quit. I got to quit. I, I'm, I'm not done. I'm just going to stop. I'm just going to stop. Um, y'all, y'all meet me on Wednesday. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna continue talking about this. Continue talking about this. Um, you, you, you have to understand. You have to understand that the whole, the whole thing, what, what he wanted to do, what he wanted to do, the Holy Spirit wanted to do and wants to do, he wants to engage you in a way that he can partner with you to get you to the place that's been willed for you. But if you do not yield, if you do not submit, if you do not say yes, if your yes, Lord, is not one that comes from within your spirit, within your soul, then you are robbing yourself. You're robbing yourself of opportunities for the supernatural to happen in your life. So today, I know this was, this was kind of gumbo, like, this message was kind of gumbo. We was kind of everywhere. Had a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But I believe um, this is what the Holy Spirit wants us to do today. I, I, I want you to uh, just make up in your mind that you are going to commit to submitting unto the Lord, yielding, saying yes, going back to that place that you moved when he said move, that you turn when he says turn, that you shift when he says to shift, that you submit your emotions, that you're not governed by your emotions, but they are submitted to the Holy Spirit. That, that your will, your decisions, your decision making is submitted to the, to the Holy Spirit. I pray y'all been blessed by this word. I'm going to stop right here, but what I want to do, I want to give, I want to give uh, those that don't know Jesus an opportunity to know him. If you're listening to me, you're watching You'll be watching this later on. I want to tell you, Jesus died on the cross for your sins. It does not matter what it is that you've done. All of the things that you've faced in life, all of the things that you're, you're ashamed of, you're not proud of, please understand, he's already died for it. All you got to do is just, just submit your life, give your life to him. Just turn it over to him. Don't try to change before you come to him. Let him change you. So it's simple. Just, just pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner. I know that I need you. I can't do this anymore by myself. I believe what you did on the cross is real. I believe that you died for my sins and rose again. And I accept that as truth. And I want you to come into my life. I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. I want, you to, I, I want to live for you. Say that. Just tell them. I want to say yes to your will. Save me, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for saving me. If you prayed that prayer, it's just that simple. I want you to lift your hands where you are. And receive ye the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I pray even now that you be filled, that you experience his power, that you have your own authentic experience, the power 
of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God being in your life. In the name of Jesus. If you prayed that prayer and you're, you're watching me on uh, the Edgeville page, I want you to let us know that you've prayed that prayer and your life has been changed. Let us know at uh, Edgefield Church at gmail.com. Edgefield Church at gmail.com. Let us know that you gave your life to the Lord. All right? If you're watching me on Black Women Empowered, just go to www.blackwomenempoweredjournal.com and let us know that you gave your life to the Lord, that you were filled with the Holy Spirit of God. All right? I want to thank you all for joining us today. I pray that you have enjoyed our time in the Word, that you've been blessed. And as we prepare uh, to end, I want you to be reminded of all of our announcements, be reminded of uh, the things that we have coming up, and I want you to pray, 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 pray for each other, continue to cover each other, uh, and let's continue uh, to meet in prayer uh, on Wednesday nights at 630 on our prayer call. Uh, and also, let's continue uh, to cover this nation. Let's continue to pray for the world. Let's pray that God would heal the land. All right? Um, am I missing anything else? No, I think that's it. All right. Yes. All right. So you've, you've uh, Black Women of Power, thank you so much for joining us. You've been watching uh, Sunday Morning with Bishop Smart. Thank you so much. Thank you again, Dr. King. Um, again, all of those that are following us on, and that are live on Facebook, uh, remember you can follow us. Let me um, stay true. I don't want to lie online. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't want to lie at all. But uh, <clears throat> on Facebook, you can follow us at Edgefield Fayetteville. Uh, on YouTube, you can follow us at Edgefield Church. And on Twitch TV, you can follow us at Edgefield Fayetteville. And Periscope, you can follow us at Edgefield Fayetteville. All right? Our prayers are with you. We love you so much. I want you to say it with me. I'm healed, I'm delivered, and I'm set free. And I'm walking in greater victory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have an amazing day and an even better tomorrow. God bless. <laughs>